Golf Ball Park, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the Delaware starting batting lineup this afternoon. And Chase, it is a very strong Delaware offense as six out of their first seven batters are batting over 300 this season. So leading it off is Jules Garber, followed by Katie Shivert, Sydney Schaefer, batting in the cleanup spot is Gianna Costaro, then Julie Boyette. Morgan Hess, Chloe Blantz, Maddie Fife, and rounding it out is Veronica Diamidi. And Chase, this is a very, very strong Blue Hens batting lineup. Well, that's why it was so surprising that McKenna Card almost got the complete game shut out. It, she was 20 out, 21 outs away from that. So it's up to Duggins today to try to replicate that effort. Now, everything else is going to have to come together around her. But it was a huge part yesterday that they were able to hold this Delaware offense to only that one home run. Isley Duggins currently with a record of two and five, a seven flat ERA, has pitched 43 innings, has 16 strikeouts and 41 walks on the season, Chase. Well, last season had a 4.52 ERA, so about where she was last season in terms of her production, Burlington, North Carolina native, junior, hoping they can get some good production out of her today. Duggins attended Southern Alamance High School just down the road. She isn't the only Elon Phoenix player on the roster who also attended high school right here in Alamance County. Elon does a really good job of getting a lot of local talent, but she'll go ahead and get the start for game number two of this three game series. Elon hoping to ultimately pull off the upset and beat the Blue Hens in the series. Delaware is still looking to potentially beat Elon today and tomorrow as that one goes outside and we're officially underway. And going against Jules Garber here at the top of the lineup for the Blue Hens. She's gotten a CAA accolade pretty much every season. Last year was all CAA second team. Preseason all CAA this season. Currently fourth in the CAA in terms of batting average at 376. Also second on the team in stolen bases is seven of eight, which she tries to steal. 2-0 count now. Puts that one straight over to Duggins. Duggins easy throw over to Gabby Shaw. And no, they're gonna call her safe. Gabby Shaw was off the bag. Lost her position on the field there. Because of that, Jules Garber is gonna go ahead, get to first. They do call that an error, but man, what a bad mistake by the Elon Phoenix there, Chase. Well, I want to see possibly the replay a little slower. The feet placement was maybe a little bit off, and I think, yeah, the umps are going to talk about it. But I wouldn't be surprised if Shaw had possession before. I'm not sure. We're going to have to see another look. So the first at-bat results in a quick meeting by the umpires. They don't take long to decide. They do go ahead and call her safe. Shaw's feet were pretty close to the plate right there, just looking on the replay. However, it did look to be just off. But still, that's a routine play right there, Chase, that you have to make. Well, leading off with an error is not how you want to start things. They did do the same thing yesterday, where they had an error early. So we hope to see Elon's defense recover. But again, this is a Delaware offense that yesterday was not the normal production from them. Oh yeah, this is a Delaware offense that has consistently been at the top of the CAA in multiple categories, but other than a two-run home run by Maddie Fife in the seventh inning, they really couldn't get anything else going. As McKenna McCard really put on a really, really good performance in the pitching circle yesterday, Chase. Well, she's Elon's ace, but yesterday might have been the best performance of her career. Again, this is, we're gonna keep talking about it all game long. This is one of the hottest teams in college softball, and she was almost able to go seven innings against them without letting up a run. Now a 3-0 count. Katie Shivert now batting, batting 287 this season. Has 14 RBIs. Also two triples and three doubles. She's up early in this count, 3-0. That one called just outside. So four pitches result in four balls. And just like that, you got runners at first and second no outs. Again, not the start, and you're going to see them have a meeting at the center circle already. So definitely not the start you want for Elon. It's important to note yesterday that Elon was really, really successful, mainly because McKenna McCarr was able to get up early in those counts. She got the early advantage in each at-bat with those 0-2, 1-2 counts. But now, Isley Duggan's kind of falling behind early. 
and she kept her pitch count pretty low, all things considered. And again, she did so with only two strikeouts, and one of those was the final out of the day. So really it was because of her defense, but like you said, able to get ahead in those pitch counts to really battle against the Delaware Blue Hen batters. Sydney Schaefer now batting third, second in the CAA in terms of batting average at 404. That pitch was dropped by Mary Mosswork, quickly picks it up. Now five straight balls against Isley Duggins. Schaefer also third in the CAA in terms of doubles with 11 and fourth in CAA in terms of RBIs with 25. That one goes a little bit high, makes it a 2-0 count. But here's the most impressive stat though, Chase. She has an on-base percentage of 509, which is the top of the CAA. Well, we were talking before this game about our favorite sports movies. And of course, whenever you hear on-base percentage, your mind immediately goes to Moneyball. And that's one of the most important stats in the game of softball. She gets on base. She gets on base, that's for sure. Over half the time she enter into this batter's box, she will go ahead and get at least over to first base. Well, right now you just want to see Duggins really just throw a pitch in the zone. I mean, that is nearly six straight balls that she's thrown. That one called a strike, finally finds the strike zone. But not only is Sydney Schaefer good at getting on base, she's good at driving in those runs. And so Delaware really has a good opportunity to potentially get up early. 3-1 count, still a hitter's count for Schaefer. Schaefer puts that one. Are they gonna call that fair? Yes, they do. No, they're gonna call that foul. They were telling the runners to come home there for a second. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick look at the replay. It just went foul, just to the left of the third base. But that certainly would have been a two-run RBI by Sydney Schaefer. Oh, certainly, if it had just Stayed fair just a little bit longer, but again, cut right in front of the third base bag. Now a 3-2 count, Schaefer puts that one foul again. No question about it that time around though, still a 3-2 count. Well, now you're at full count, so really anybody's game. Again, you don't want to give Schaefer something too easy. She'll easily put it into play. Elon still can get a double play, whether it be at third base or second base. So the Phoenix could get themselves out of this jam that they've created. Schaefer fouls that one off. That one looked to be a little inside there, Chase. Well, I think Schaefer right now is just battling, really trying to put something in play. I mean, you got two runners on the bag. This is a team that didn't score until the seventh inning, so you're hungry to get some points on the board early. Schaefer did have a double in yesterday's game. She pops that one up shallow going towards Ali Searing, who drops it in foul territory. That one's got a sting right there for the Phoenix. It isn't a hit, but already the second error of the afternoon against the Elon Phoenix. Well, really tough one, especially with the wind today. It's a little bit colder this weekend here in Elon, North Carolina, so, so, so that wind definitely playing a factor, making it a bit tougher for those routine flyouts. That one goes into the dirt, ball four is called. Schaefer will go ahead and take first base. Bases are now loaded. And going back to that dropped alley searing play over in foul territory, that really, really has to hurt for the Elon Phoenix chase. Well, like you said, bases loaded. And this is exactly what you want out of your lineup. One, two, three, everybody gets on base. And now you've got your home run hitter in Castaro that with bases loaded is batting 600. So Gianna Castaro now up to bat for the Blue Hens, batting 325 this season. Here's the really scary number right here if you're the Phoenix Chase. She leads the CAA in both RBIs and home runs. I mean, you put it blankly, she thrives in situations like this, and Elon needs to get out of this. Two errors already. You don't want to allow Delaware to get hot early. That one goes inside. Castaro also has a pretty good on-base percentage of 472. That's fourth in the CAA. Castaro also named the CAA Player of the Week for the week of February 27th. Doing all that as a freshman as well. Also a two-time CAA All-Rookie player. Named it back-to-back -back during mid-March 
And now an early 2-0 count. Duggan's struggling to find the strike zone in these early at-bats. Well, it's tough for Duggan's because while you want to pitch around Castaro, don't want to really put it in the zone because she can just nail it. But you also have been on the streak of just throwing balls. Another ball is called, making a 3-0 count. Staro may go ahead and get another RBI under her belt without putting ball to bat here, Chase. Well, that's the best way to do it. Easy for you. 3-0 count coming up. Also got to be careful not to give anything easy to Castaro in the strike zone. That one is called ball four, and so Delaware takes an early 1-0 lead. May have actually been a hit by pitch, but regardless, it's still going to drive in a run for the Delaware Blue Hens. I was about to say, it might have scraped her, but it was really close. Either way, it would have been inside, and definitely not how you want to start. We already said you start with an error right off the bat, and you could have had an easy out, and then the other error where you could have had another one, but right now, no outs on the board and one run in. They do go ahead and call that in hit by pitch. Really only difference is what you mark it down in, in the scorebook as it was ball three anyways on the board. So with that, Julia Boyette now up to bat starting at third base this afternoon for Delaware batting 301. Second on the team and third in the CAA and RBIs at 26. Chase, multiple Delaware Blue Hens in that top five in terms of RBIs. And she comes from a really stellar program in Duke. You've got a lot of talented hitters on this Delaware squad. It makes the win yesterday even more impressive. But they're showing you why they went on that long win streak and hadn't lost it, only one conference game up to that point. Delaware has won 16 out of their last 18 games. And before yesterday's game, they were on a 13-game winning streak. Only dropped two games in CAA play as well. One of them to Elon yesterday. The other one, a game against Charleston back on March the 8th. 1-2 count now. Base is still loaded. No outs. Strike three is called. Isley Duggins gets her first strikeout of the afternoon. She caught Boyette looking. A really nice pitch. And that's how you boost your confidence as a pitcher. You already let up a run, walks, errors, but it doesn't matter. That strikeout's going to mean a lot to Duggins. Hess hits that one straight over to Allie Searing. She caught it, puts her foot on third base, gets the double play. Delaware up 1-0 early, but man, oh man, what a clutch play by Allie Searing, making up for the earlier error. As Delaware, though, they still lead 1-0 as we head into the bottom of the first inning. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. Delaware with the early 1-0 lead. However, Elon with some clutch defense late to prevent more runs from coming in. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at the Elon batting lineup. First leading off is number one, Megan Grant, followed by Drew Mincer, Mari Murray, Carly Davis batting in the cleanup spot, Ali Searing, Caitlin Wells, Gabby Shaw, Mary Mosquert, and Greta Hessenthaler rounding things out. And Chase, this is the batting lineup that Elon has grown very accustomed to this season. Well, they put their veterans at the top here with Grant and Menser, both seniors. And they've done a really nice job here in the leadoff spots. 
And as you mentioned, minimizing damage in the top of the first. Left two runners on the bags and really clutch double play by Allie Searing at third. Really the only notable thing in terms of this Elon batting lineup this afternoon is that Mary Moss Wirt gets to start at catcher and Carly Davis is the designated player. Out number one already on the board. Easy play for Katie Shivert starting at second base this afternoon for Delaware. So just like that, Drew Menser starting at center field will go ahead and enter into the batter's box. Taking a quick look at the starting pitcher this afternoon, though, for the Delaware Blue Hens, it's Morgan Hess. She was actually the last batter in that last half inning for Delaware. She plays both ways. Preseason All-CAA player going ahead looking at her pitching stats. This is her 12th start of the season. Has an 8-4 record, a 2.81 ERA, and a save. Has pitched 79.2 innings, 42 strikeouts, 22 walks, and an opponent batting average of 239. Early 1-0 count now, and that one called a strike. And that's not even going into her. The only way to put it is illustrious career at Presbyterian. I mean, we could go on all day, but only in two years there, she became one of the all-time leaders in just about every single category, hitting and pitching. First team All-Big South player last season with Presbyterian. Had an 8-9 record last year where she had a 3.43 ERA, had 98 strikeouts and 55 walks, an opponent batting average of 257 as well. Back in 2022, also a three-time Big South Freshman of the Week. That one fouled off by Mincer. That makes it a 2-2 count. I know she's in the circle right now, but she is lethal as a batter. As a freshman, she led the Big South in home runs. Oh, and then she did again her sophomore season, becoming the all-time Presbyterian home run leader with 29 total in just her two years. Very, very good get for the Delaware Blue Hens in terms of the transfer portal. That one fouled off by Mincer. And this is a Delaware team where their pitching room is just really stellar. You have Hess, and then yesterday, not her best outing, but Winburn, when she's on her game, is one of the best this conference has. It's interesting, though, all but two games this season have been started by either Winburn or Hess, and you can see why as she gets her first strike out of the afternoon. Pot mints are looking. And now that's another strikeout where you get a batter looking. They had, Duggan's had one in the top of the first. And this is going to be a pitching battle all day long. Taking a quick look at head coach Kathy Bocock, the winningest coach in Elon history, has become a staple here, not only at Elon University, but the Alamance County community as a whole. And she has really, really led this team, especially to recent success, as Elon has made some late runs in the CAA tournament over the past few years. For sure, and a lot of those players that made the difference are here this weekend for alumni. Alumni weekend, we saw Sophia DeVeza and Bella DeVeza this afternoon. Bella DeVeza, of course, really the star shortstop for the Phoenix yesterday. Of course, Sophia, her sister, currently an assistant on the Elon program as well. So it's good to see some alumni here this afternoon. 1-1 one, one count now for Mari Murray, makes it a 2-1 count. Murray batting 330 this season. And the Delaware dugout did not love that ball count. It was a nice looking off speed pitch right there. They called it just outside of the strike zone. Mary also with an on base percentage though of 422. That one fouled over the press box. That'll make it a 2 2 count. Mari Murray, 23 RBIs so far this season. Also has four doubles and six home runs. Both teams still looking for a hit this afternoon, ironically enough. Murray goes ahead, gets the first hit of the afternoon. She'll go ahead and stay at first, went right over the head of Katie Shivert. So now runner at first for the Elon Phoenix. As Carly Davis batting cleanup will go ahead and enter into the batter's box. Well, Mari Murray has just had a great second season here in the maroon and gold last year, only nine RBIs, and like you said, 23 this season, starting off the day with a single. 
Harley Davis had a solo home run in yesterday's game in the bottom of the third inning. Has 13 RBIs and three home runs on the season. It's also fifth in the CAA in terms of on-base percentage at 458. Davis starting at the designated player position. However, the majority of the time she starts at catcher. And now she's going to go down early with an 0-2 count after that foul ball. Murray also had a pretty strong weekend against Charleston a week ago, batted four of nine in that series with five RBIs and a double. That one goes low. Makes it a one-two count. Davis also has thrown out 14 batters last season when they were trying to steal, which was second in the CAA. Davis pops that one shallow. Catch is easily made by Boyette over at third base. And so despite Elon getting the first hit for either team, they go ahead and still trail 1-0 as we go into the second inning. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. Delaware is still with the early 1-0 lead. That one is popped up. And Megan Grant waving people off. She drops it. It's the third air of the afternoon. She is safe at second. Chloe Blance, who was batting seventh this afternoon for the Elon Phoenix. And Chase, these Elon gloves are struggling really early. And it's not often that they have too many errors, and you can see Blance there. She did not expect to make it all the way to second. Let's out the scream there. But again, this is a Delaware team without a hit up to this point. It's just playing off of errors. That one low past Mary Moss Wirt, and so now Blance is at third base. Again, Isley Duggins has had a pretty decent afternoon so far, Chase, in the pitching circle. It's just that those fielders are just not really helping her right now. Well, it's the opposite of yesterday where McCard, again, only two strikeouts, really relied on her defense to get those outs. And today, it's just not been the same. That one fouled off. If that had stayed fair, that potentially would have been over the fence. But Maddie Fife, you got to be careful right here, too. Maddie Fife had that two run home run very late in the game yesterday. And that was against McKenna McCard, too. Fouled off again, makes it a one two count. Now, looking a little bit more at Jen Steele, the head coach for Delaware, led the Delaware Blue Hens to back to back CAA regular season championships, was also back to back. CAA Coach of the Year. Also a 19-4 record during the shortened 2020 season. Previously the head coach at Jacksonville and an assistant at George Mason and Longwood. That pitch blocked by Mary Moss Wirt. Steele, a four-year member though, the Longwood softball team was the 2002 Carolinas Virginia Conference Freshman of the Year. Had 73 wins and 409 strikeouts and a career ERA of 1.75. That one gets past Mary Moss, Wirt runner coming home. She is in time. 
So some bad pitches from Isley Duggins and an error by Megan Grant Lee to run number two being scored for the Delaware Blue Hens. Chase, it's 2-0 and the Blue Hens don't even have a hit yet. But you took the words right out of my mouth. This is just easy offense for the Delaware Blue Hens. Again, no hits. You've got two runs on the board and of course, Coach Bo is gonna wanna talk this one over in the center circle. But a wild pitch, three errors. This is just not the start you want. After a great game yesterday, everything has been going wrong for Elon. Despite Delaware's loss yesterday, their fielding was still pretty good. They only had one error, and that error was in the outfield. And it was basically the difference between a single and a double. And so that batter was going to get on base regardless. But Elon really, really struggling to right here. I mean, Isley Duggins has overall done a pretty good job. Sure, there have been a few pitches that have got past Mary Moss word, especially that last pitch right there that brought in the run. But other than that, Chase, I mean, she's holding her own in the pitching circle against a very good Delaware offense. It's just that this Elon infield and outfield have not been able to get those outs when presented with the opportunity to do so. Well, on one side, without the context, you sit here and you say, well, Duggins has thrown a no-hitter. And then on the other end, there's three airs on the board and two runs. That one goes into the dirt. Ball four is called. It is one thing Duggins has struggled with a little bit this afternoon is throwing walks. There have been multiple scenarios this season where she has struggled in doing so. Came into today with 41 walks to only 16 strikeouts. Well, today she's walked three batters and then a hit by pitch, a wild pitch that led to a run. So the control has just not been where you want it. Veronica Diamidi rounding out the Delaware batting lineup, batting 182 this season. Does have three RBIs though. Diamidi, a two-year captain in high school as that one is fouled off. First team All-State player, both her sophomore and junior seasons. Duggins is now up early 0-2. O2 count runner at first, no outs on the board. Diamidi gets contact, keeps herself alive. Diamidi yesterday went 0 for 1 in her at bats. And this was a Delaware offense chase that they struggled yesterday. And that could definitely be seen through innings one through six. The only offense they were able to really produce was that late two-run home run by Maddie Fife. That one goes outside. Makes it a 2-2 count. Well, another important thing to note, Bryson, you got no outs on the board. And Duggins is struggling. Yesterday, McCard was able to go the full seven innings. You definitely don't want to have to reach into your back pocket early. Diamidi puts that one over to first. Shaw makes the play at first. Not able to apply the tag over at second, though. Shaw was slipping as she threw that ball. If she had stayed fully upright, then Megan Grant probably would have been able to apply the tag and get the double play. Not only that, you've already had a error before where Shaw kind of misstepped on first base to open up the game. And that was pretty close there. But she's able to get up, make the play, not able to get it over two seconds so the runner advances. Basically the equivalent of a bunt. That one hit pretty deep into left field. That one goes off the wall. That'll go ahead and advance runners to second and third. Good hit right there for the Delaware Blue Hens. And man, Chase, they are going ahead and opening things up offensively. Ironically enough though, that's their first hit of the afternoon. And now both Elon and Delaware with one hit, but one team has just struggled fielding wise. And it hasn't been a single person. It's been three different players committing those errors. So Jules Garber gets a double. That one goes into the dirt. Makes a 1-0 count early. Gotta be really careful right here. This is a very good part of the Delaware batting lineup. Shivert batting 287, but then you got Schaefer behind her batting 404 and Castaro behind her batting 325. That one hit over to Ali Searing goes foul.
Elon was able to get out of the top of the first inning with a really nice double play initiated by Ali Searing. Really not a good spot though to potentially get a double play anywhere without applying a tag though. That one hit over Mega Grant's head. That's gonna go ahead and bring in a run for the Delaware Blue Hens. Makes it a 3-0 game. It's gonna be an RBI double for Shiver. Beautiful, beautiful hit by Shiver. Just dropping it in no man's land there in left field. Shiver got good contact, per placed it perfectly over Megan Grant's head, wasn't even able to attempt to make a catch. Went ahead and brought home a runner in Fife. And just like that, it looks like Isley Duggan's day is gonna go ahead and come to a close and Taylor Cherry is gonna go ahead and enter into the pitching circle. We'll go ahead and give you some more information about her coming up after this break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. And Elon with an early pitching change as Delaware is up 3-0. They go ahead and let Taylor Cherry go into the pitcher's circle. She has a 4-3 record through 16 appearances this season, has a 3.89 ERA, 29 strikeouts, and 15 walks through her 16 appearances, Chase. And not the best start for Elon. You already seen your starter in Duggins only was able to go 1.1 innings, but Taylor Cherry, one of the better pitchers in the rotation for Elon. They're hoping that she can get them out of the slump. Cherry's opponents have a batting average of, two, of .297 this season. First pitch is called a ball for Taylor Cherry. Cherry only has four starts on the season. They use her a lot in more relief type of scenarios. Still, you got to figure that if you're the Elon Phoenix, you don't want to go ahead and reach into your bullpen this early. 1-1 one, one count now. Sydney Schaefer now batting for the Delaware Blue Hens, batting 4-0-4 this season, was walked in her first at-bat, and so almost throwing Taylor Cherry into the lines then a little bit with runners at second and third, going up against the best batter that this Blue Hens lineup has. 100%. That one popped up. Catch is made by Gabby Shaw, two outs on the board. Can't take any outs for granted this afternoon, Chase, but a really good start there by Taylor Cherry. And you almost tense up a little bit because you've already had a couple of those pop flies routinely have just turned into airs and have set up Delaware for this nice lead they've got here through two. Gianna Costaro now batting, batting 325 coming into this afternoon. That one fouled off. Talked about she was a two-time CAA Rookie of the Week. Looking back at her high school days, was a two-time all-county player. Was also an all-conference player in basketball. She's a hooper. We've seen this with multiple Delaware and Elon players. But they were multi-sport athletes back in high school. That one just outside the strike zone makes it a 1-1 count. Mentioned it on the broadcast yesterday, Costaro's father also played football at Sacred Heart University from 1992 to 1996. 
Starro with an on-base percentage this season of 472 as well. 1-1 one, one count, Costaro hits that one foul, goes over the wall though. It's not the first time we've seen that this afternoon, Chase, as Delaware is getting some good contact, they're just pushing it too far to the left. Well, and Costaro, a home run hitter, she's got seven on the year and she's looking to make a beeline for home run hill. She keeps pushing it left. That seven home runs is at the top of the CAA in that category. Once again, you gotta be careful here for Taylor Cherry. That one goes high, makes it a 2-2 count. Cherry does a good job of getting up early in this at bat. However, Costaro battling her way back a little bit, it seems. Two-two count now. Costaro slaps that one foul. Had a good pop off the bat. She'll keep herself alive. Starro showing that if she can place it fair, then that she could get some RBIs right here. Well, you can feel it. Costaro every time is getting a nice hit on the ball. And again, just keeps going foul, but that left field wall is looking good. That one fouled off by Costaro. Still a 2-2 count. Really good battle right here between Taylor Cherry and Gianna Costaro. Costaro had an RBI in the first Drexel game last weekend. Weather was relatively quiet in the other games. So that one is popped foul. Catch is made. And the good job right there by the Phoenix to ultimately limit the run scored by Delaware. But the Blue Hens still lead 3-0 as we go into the bottom of the second inning. With Elon's win yesterday, a lot of history was made. It snapped a 13-game win streak that Delaware had coming into that game. It was the longest ever win streak for Delaware in their conference. And it was a really, really good performance yesterday there by Elon Chase. As Delaware, they had the hot hand coming into that one. Had been some really good teams in CAA play. Had won 16 out of their last 17 coming into that one as well. But Elon was able to put together a master class in both offensive and defensive production, ultimately get up early on the Delaware Blue Hens in this weekend series. And we mentioned it before with the accolades that Delaware has collected over the last couple seasons. As long as you and I have been here at Elon, they've been the premier program. They've been the team to beat. So for Elon to get a win to open up the series, you're hoping that Maybe they can come away with another, but even then, one win against this team is really nice going on their resume. Blue Hens still trying to look for that CAA tournament victory. They were the regular season champions last year. However, they saw an early exit after really close back-to-back -back losses. First one was to Towson, and the second one to Stony Brook. Now an early 2-1 count for Ali Searing. Searing batting 321 coming into this at bat. Strike is called there. Makes it a 2 2 count. Yeah. 
That one popped foul over the press box. Allie Searing, arguably the best batter that the Elon Phoenix has to offer. Second in the CAA in RBIs at 28. Also leads the CAA in triples with three, second on the team in doubles with eight. Also a perfect 12 of 12 in terms of stolen bases. That one goes high, full count now for Allie Searing. And a perfect three for three at the plate yesterday as well. Also had a double in yesterday's game. Phoenix once again had probably their best game, at least in CAA play, as they were able to take down the top team in the conference. Pretty good piece right there by Ali Searing, hits it foul. Swung a little too early, but the power is certainly there. Well, Searing, well, talking about Hess, Hess is someone that kind of, she's had a great season, 2.78 ERA, but struggles against leadoff hitters, laying up a 418 against them. But Ali Searing, like you said, one of the best Elon has to offer. That one called a ball. Ali Searing will go ahead and head over to first. Searing was also two of two in an RBI in that NC State game, so she's still a perfect five of five in terms of those at-bats. That one just went a little low. Hess just had to have a few more inches higher, and that probably would have been a strike three. Well, that one was really close. There's been a couple of those. But if you're Delaware, you've got a nice cushion with a three-run lead. You can forward a couple of those. Caitlin Wells batting 272 this season. She was our player to watch yesterday. Had a very, very solid performance last weekend in Charleston with three home runs and six RBIs. That one goes outside. Fife was looking at first base there for a second. Ali Searing with a pretty decently big leadoff. Just trying to keep Ali Searing truthful. We'll go ahead and have a 1-1 count. Well, they read the scouting report. 12 for 12 on stolen bases, 100%. That one tipped by Caitlin Wells. Wells also had an RBI yesterday. So she added to that Elon offensive production. Although it's important to note, Chase, that that was really only seen in that second inning. Yes, you did have that solo shot from Carly Davis in the third. But Elon's offense, even though it was going, it was still somewhat limited later on in the game. Strike three is called there. Caitlin Wells fell for the off-speed pitch. That was a really nice pitch. That's probably Wells' best of the day. It's almost hard to tell in the replay, but watching it live, that off speed just got Caitlin Wells swinging early. Gabby Shaw, one of the best players that Elon has to offer. Shaw hits that one deep, but it's going to go foul. For a split second there, Chase, I thought that one was going to be a home run to make it a 3-2 ball game, but then it just kept going left. Well, that left side of the foul pole has been very active. Somebody's going to hit to home run hill today. We just don't know who yet. But Gabby Shaw, big reason Elon got out of that second, top of the second, with only two runs given up. She had all three of the putouts. Wind's still blowing to the left this afternoon. Not, however, not nearly as hard as it was last evening. Still a lot of batters placing it into left field. Veronica Diamidi starting in left field this afternoon for Delaware. As Ali Searing going to go ahead and try to steal second, she is safe. Make it 13 a 13 for number 29, Ali Searing, in terms of stolen bases. It's almost an art form, the stolen base. I mean, able to get down. And, and Fife's got a really good arm, and she just wasn't able to get there in time. But you're going against one of the best in the nation when it comes to stealing bases. I was about to say, that was actually a pretty good throw right there by Maddie Fife. It was just that Ali Searing got a really good jump when she initially stole the base, and there's really nothing you could do in that situation if you're Maddie Fife. It's now a 2-2 count. First time Elon has been in scoring position this afternoon now. That one goes low. Shaw has battled her way back a little bit, makes it a full count. 
Looking back to last weekend, she batted two or three with two doubles and three RBIs in that final game against the College of Charleston. 3-2-1 on the board now. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Shaw swinging a miss there. Morgan Hess gets another strikeout this afternoon. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, and that's going to be her third so far, and she's not even completely through the first run of the order. Morgan Hess is dealing right now. Mary Mossworth now batting for the Elon Phoenix, still looking for her first hit of the season. However, does have an on-base percentage of 250. Getting the start at catcher this afternoon. Wirt has had 17 starts before this afternoon. Also, hasn't gotten a hit, but has an RBI. So she's driven in a run without a hit. That one goes low, early 2-0 count for Wirt. Wirt, a two-time all-conference player at Orange High School. Her father also played baseball here at Elon. Has the delivery, that one goes, uh, no, it's gonna be called a strike. It's the reason why I'm up here and not behind home plate, because it's now a 2-1 count. Allie Searing still at second base, could potentially see her try to steal third. That one called a ball. Hitter's count now goes to Mary Moss Wirt. And this is what Mary Moss has done all season long. No hits, but has been able to be walked on multiple occasions. But only one walk for Hess so far. Fouls that one off. Wirt has been walked 10 times this season. Also has been hit by a pitch twice. So despite her not having a hit, that's why she still has that on-base percentage of 250. Last season, she batted 125 with three RBIs. Was also three of three in her stolen base attempts. Full count now for Wirt. Wirt pops that one up into the outfield. Catch is ultimately made by Ellie Mulligan, starting in right field. However, not in the batting lineup for the Delaware Blue Hens. And just like that, Delaware still leads 3-0 at the end of the second inning. Welcome back to Flow Sports, ladies and gentlemen. Delaware leads 3-0 in large part because of multiple miscues by the Elon Phoenix. They already had three errors through only two innings played this afternoon. Also had a wild pitch get past Mary Moss Wirt at catcher that also brought in a run for Delaware earlier on. And it's really been those mistakes have been the reason why Delaware has this early lead. Well, they forced Elon to go into the bullpen. Taylor Cherry now up, was able to get them out of a tough situation in the last inning, but again, you now got this hole that the Elon offense is gonna have to come along, but right now it's the defense that's been struggling. That is one of the positives right now for Elon is that they've been able to limit the bleeding a little bit. Delaware has left four runners on base this afternoon, and all four were in pretty good scoring position as well. And so it certainly could have been worse for the Elon Phoenix. Boyette hits that one up to Mari Murray, makes the catch in right field, out number one already on the board. Morgan Hess 
Now goes from the pitcher's circle to the batter's box, batting 345 this season. Already a pretty impressive stat as is, but you certainly don't expect that from a pitcher. Well, no, and we're starting to see not only in baseball, but more so in softball as well, these two-way players. And just because they have that luxury, well, I say luxury, but it is a lot of work playing both ways. You notice it, and it really is spectacular seeing someone that can not only have success in the center circle, but then able to add offensively as well for a team. Her first at bat though today did result in that double play and that was deja vu right there as she once again hits it right over to Allie Searing just like her first at bat. Allie Searing basically hit straight into her glove. Didn't even have to move for it and just like that, two up, two down. Well that was basically the exact same play that ended in the double play before Morgan Hess is, right now, Allie Searing is just all over everything that Morgan Hess is hitting towards her. Going back though to those pitchers who are also hitters, I mean, kind of see that with Elon's baseball team with Ryan Sprock. Also saw it last year a little bit with Cole Reynolds as well. And so you've certainly, Elon has certainly produced that type of talent, at least on the baseball side of things. Delaware, Morgan Hess, a very good player, though she is 0 of 2 this afternoon. Chloe Blantz now up to bat. That one called a strike, makes it a 1-1 count early. And you definitely want to see the Elon pitchers try to get ahead in the count here. There's been too many times where Delaware's been faced with 3-1 counts or been walked. Elon needs to get ahead and really rely on their pitchers here. That one hit over to Megan Grant. Megan Grant, her second error of the afternoon. That one was hit on the ground very hard. It kind of skipped there a little bit, almost like throwing a rock off a pond. But still, that has certainly got to hurt for the Elon Phoenix. Still, they do have two outs on the board, though. So it wasn't like those earlier errors where it was early on in the inning, but still three straight innings where Elon has committed at least one error. And now it becomes a question of a mental thing because you're three innings in, every inning you've had an error, and you kind of tense up as a infield player and outfield. Those easy outs become something that you have to think about a little bit more, and sometimes that even leads to more errors. 1-0 count now. Does give us an opportunity to close the book on Isley Duggins. 1.1 innings pitched, only one earned run, got to remember, off those errors. Three walks and one strikeout to her name this afternoon. That one called a strike, going back to Taylor Cherry. Maddie Fife, who we've mentioned, had that one bright moment for Delaware yesterday in that two-run home run. However, it was too little too late. Hoping to replicate it here in this at-bat. Strike two called. Taylor Cherry, I gotta say, has done a good job of coming in, settling things down here for Elon on defense. Hasn't thrown a strikeout yet, but also hasn't let up a hit. Delaware has gone on base in other ways. Also has not allowed a walk so far in this early appearance. That one hits straight into Taylor Cherry. Cherry is ultimately able to make the throw. It was a very hard hit towards the pitcher circle, but Taylor Cherry took it like a champ as Delaware leads 3-0 after the top of the third inning.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. Delaware still leads 3-0. Great day to bring out the family here on this Saturday afternoon. Still a little bit chilly. That's some Carolina weather right there, but still looking pretty good right now. Sun is out. Delaware, though, they have really been able to get out to an early lead because of Elon mistakes. Just to kind of put it in perspective, Elon has more errors right now than there are combined hits between the two teams. With a 3-0 lead, you'd think there'd be a ton of offense. Delaware's been doing fantastic hitting-wise, but they only have two hits. A lot of their runs have come off of errors. They've already forced Elon to go into the bullpen, but Morgan Hess has been dealing, and that's a big reason why Delaware's been able to keep their lead. It's interesting, because Hess is kind of their secondary starting pitcher. Winburn is their main starting pitcher. However, Winburn struggled early yesterday, but Morgan Hess has had a really good afternoon right now in the pitching circle, has only allowed one hit. Still a long way to go though. Greta Hessenthaler down early in this at bat 02, batting 266 this season. That one goes outside. Hessenthaler has played such an important part to this Elon team very early on in her career. The only freshman starter right now for the Phoenix. Well, as of first year, she really has played a critical role for them, mostly at second base, and has gotten some really good hits as well. Hessenthaler not able to beat out the throw. Chloe Blantz able to make the play over at shortstop. And Megan Grant now up to bat. Grant already has had two errors this afternoon over at shortstop. Her first at bat resulted in a ground out as well. But still, that certainly does not paint nearly the full picture of Bangan Grant. One of the best leaders on this team, batting a solid 271 this season with nine RBIs and nine doubles. It's also been walked 20 times, which leads to an on base percentage of 421. That one goes high. Hits Megan Grant in the back. She'll go ahead and take first base. That one kind of came out a little funny. Kind of hit her in the right shoulder there as well. So Megan Grant one of two in terms of getting on base now this afternoon. And now Drew Mincer batting second this afternoon. Struggled a little bit in the batter's box here in recent games, though still batting 202 this season. Mincer looking for a bunt there for a second and appears. Mincer also with an on base percentage of 287, also has six RBIs. If you're Mincer here, getting on base would be huge because then you're followed by Mari Murray and Carly Davis. That really good one two punch. Mincer is going to go ahead and make the bunt. That advances Megan Grant over to second. She's thrown out at first. Nice play by Mincer to advance the runner, but again, this is an Elon team that the offense has just not been there. And now they're going through the second time through the order, a chance to rebound. The one person that has got one for one so far is Mari Murray. Murray slapped that one over. Did have a single earlier in that first inning and is batting 337 this season. Arguably more importantly though, batting 462 when there are runners on base. Also has 23 RBIs on the season. Now may be the time to strike if you're the Elon Phoenix. Off speed there is called a ball. Well, as you mentioned, she's batting nearly 500 with runners on base, with runners in scoring position, 529, and then with two outs on the board, 364. So all those numbers are really promising. Strike two was called. Murray also sixth in the CAA with 23 RBIs. Also second on the team in hits with 31. Did have an inside the park home run in that second Charleston game last Saturday. She goes down early though, one, two count for Mari Murray. Ball is called there, I held my breath for a second. I thought that was gonna potentially be strike number three. 
Well, the ump has taken a second, so I don't blame you, but this Delaware dugout, you can definitely hear the groans every now and again when Morgan Hess is pitching. Not because she isn't dealing, but because these pitches are just right on that strike zone. And Murray hits that one straight over to Julia Boyette at third. She makes the catch. She'll go ahead and leave a runner at second base. This Delaware defense still holding strong as they lead 3-0 after three. We welcome you back into Hunt Softball Park, ladies and gentlemen. Delaware still with that 3-0 lead. Elon has committed four errors so far this afternoon. There is a change for the Elon Phoenix. Carly Davis now behind the dish. She subs in for Mary Moss Wirt. Davis was already the designated player this afternoon for the Elon Phoenix. That one popped up. Easy catch made by Caitlin Wells. And Chase, we've talked about it, how a surprising turnaround from last night where Elon only had one error, and it could be argued that that one error shouldn't have even been counted as an error as it was kind of a line drive, hit over to Ali Searing, wasn't able to catch it off of the bounce. But this looks like a night and day comparison between this morning's team and yesterday's team. Well, you knew that yesterday all the pieces came together, right? The hitting, the defense, and the pitching and today while the pitching hasn't been fantastic the defense has really let their guard down and it's allowed Delaware to take advantage. Delaware only batting two of 14 this afternoon compared to Elon only batting one of nine only three combined hits between the two teams through three innings averaging a half hit every half inning. And I think it's safe to say that not only Morgan Hess, but it's certainly Taylor Cherry and even Isley Duggins have came to play in the pitcher circle this afternoon. Just that the big difference has been the Elon fielding. That one hit deep over to Caitlin Wells. She's able to make the catch. Been the Caitlin Wells show here in the top of the fourth inning. Back-to-back -back catches for her. This Elon defense starting to kind of settle down a little bit, it appears. And that's a really nice out on Garber, who was able to get a single in the first off an error, that opening error, and then was able to get a double in the second. So to put her out easy here in the fourth, it's a nice confidence boost for Taylor Cherry. Katie Shivert, the sophomore out of Leesburg, Virginia, batting 295 with this at bat. Captain of the basketball team back in high school, also a second team All-State player in softball. She gets the early 2-0 count. And not the only Shivert on the roster. Yep, has a sister, Lily. Has also started in a few games herself. However, Katie has started in more this season. Lily only a freshman though, whereas Katie is a sophomore. Shiver hits that one in the gap. Drew Mincer is able to sprint over, makes a great play. And so three up, three down for the Delaware Blue Hens. We're still at 3-0 midway through the fourth.
Let's go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the CAA softball standings. Delaware sits atop 11-2 right now. Then you got that traffic jam for the second position. UNCW, Campbell, and Hofstra all at 9-4. And, and then Elon in fifth right now at 8-5. and five. Important to note, top six teams do get to the CAA tournament. And Chase Elon winning that game against Delaware yesterday really, really helped them in that CAA standing. Oh, it's a massive win, but you talk about a traffic jam. I think that's putting it lightly. There is just a cluster in the middle of the Saints. We're still early into conference play, but when it comes into it, I feel like there will be a lot of tiebreakers at the end of the season, and that win over Delaware is going to be huge. Davis is able to hit that one past Blantz at shortstop. She'll stay at first, hit number two for the Phoenix. Well, that seemed like it was going to be a routine play for Blantz, and it just got under her glove at short. Blantz kind of had a chance for it, it looks like. Allie Searing, though, has had a good, af good afternoon at third base, though. She's had those line drive hits by Morgan Hess. She's been able to steal a base or two as well. Batting 321 this season. It's definitely been a bright spot for this Elon Phoenix team this afternoon. Well, she's been a bright spot all season long. She has been fantastic for them. Multiple heroic plays all season long, especially at third base in terms of her fielding. Did have the error earlier today, but that's just not been the norm. She has been fantastic all season long. Three home runs and 28 RBIs this season for Allie Searing. Ali Searing, those 28 RBIs, good for second in that category in the conference. Going back, though, to the CAA standings a little bit, Monmouth would be the last team in right now as the sixth seed. They are 6-5 six and five overall. However, you do have Stony Brook and Drexel right behind them as they are 6-6, six and six, Monmouth 6-5. Six and five. And so not every team has played an even number of games compared to everyone else. And so that certainly throw things, throws things off a little bit. Could also kind of go ahead and say Elon eight and five, but Monmouth six and five. So if Monmouth, if they go on a two game winning streak, then they'd basically be right there with Elon. Well, and then you look at Delaware with, even with the loss yesterday, they still have a two game lead over whoever's next to them and UNCW Campbell and Hofstra. So they've got a nice little cushion here and getting two more wins this weekend wouldn't hurt. All you got to do is at least win one this weekend to go ahead and still have that undisputed first place. Strike two is called to Searing. Interesting to point out, though, that if you're the one and two seed, you get that first round by. It is a double elimination tournament. There is a pinch runner in right now for the Elon Phoenix. It is Peyton Swart now at first base. Searing pops that one up, just goes over the netting, goes into the stands. Fife was trying to chase that one down along with Castaro over at first base. Searing breathes a sigh of relief as there's still zero outs on the board. Searing batting 308 when there are runners on base this season. Searing was walked in her first at bat back in the second inning. Quick stoppage in play. Piece of potential debris seen there in the pitcher circle. They'll go ahead, get it out of the way, and restart play. Well, it's a bit windy today. Could have blown in from anywhere. 2-2 Two -two count now for Ali Searing. Elon trying to get something going on offense. Searing slaps that one. It goes foul. Landed right on the warning track. And man, oh man, both teams have placed a lot of hits over there this afternoon. Well, I think now as a hitter, you're just like waiting to see a curve, maybe a little more right, but that left side of the foul pole has been very active. Somebody's got to hit one to the right side at some point. I mean, both these teams have showed off the power. Searing puts that one on the ground, out made at second. Searing though safe at first, a throw wasn't even attempted over to first base. Kind of decent job by Peyton Swart to go ahead and kind of subtly block the throw without technically blocking the throw. Well, you could definitely see it in the second baseman. 
in Scheibert. She was ready to make that throw and just couldn't really get around Sward and you know, fair play. To be fair, it was kind of put slowly on the ground and Allie Searing is pretty fast. So she was able to beat out the throw. That throw not in time. So Allie Searing throwing out at second, but Caitlin Wells, wait a minute folks, they're gonna go ahead and call her out. So now three outs on the board, Elon will go ahead and go back on defense. We'll take a quick look at the replay as we head out. Nice throw over to second. And they go ahead and call the out at first. And we're gonna go ahead and go to the fifth inning. Delaware still leads 3-0. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. Caitlin Wells getting the start in left field had a good weekend against Charleston last week with three home runs. Was called out over at first base to go ahead and end the fourth inning. A little bit of a controversial call. Could have been a runner interference. That was potentially the call. But we were also told that she was just plainly thrown out at first. However, looking at the replay, she was safe in plenty of time. And so, Regardless, we're still in the top of the fifth inning now after that double play by the Blue Hens. It's a tough one for Elon where you felt like they were starting to get a little bit of momentum offensively. But on defense, they went last inning without an error, which going from the first three innings is an improvement. And a lot of that was because of Wells' plays in the outfield and Menser in center. 1-1 one, one count now. Schaefer batting a 400 even this season. Is 0 of 1 right now, was walked in the first inning. And her second at bat resulted in an out, and so a 1 2 count. Taylor Cherry, that ERA is creeping down for her as this game goes on. It's now stands at a 3.67. Goes outside. Both teams, though, are really struggling to hit the ball this afternoon. Delaware 2 of 16, Elon 2 of 12. And those hits for Delaware have even been what has led to the runs. It's been the airs, which we keep bringing up. But Elon just hasn't been able to really get anything off their hits. Throw over to first, plenty in time. And so out number one on the board for the Elon Phoenix. Go ahead and take a quick look at the replay. It did go into the dirt, but still no problem for Carly Davis to make the throw over to Gabby Shaw. The first strike out of the afternoon for Taylor Cherry as well. That one slapped by Costaro. Goes straight into the netting right above the Delaware bullpen. 0 for 1 in her at-bats this afternoon. However, she does have an RBI that was back in the first inning. It was a hit by pitch that brought a runner home. Delaware got off to a really nice start with getting on base, doing error, two walks, and then that hit by pitch, as you mentioned, bringing home a runner in the first inning. Then they picked up two more in the second, but Elon unable to answer, but Taylor Cherry, she has come in and done a fantastic 
job against every batter she's faced. Only one strikeout, but hasn't let up a hit, hasn't let up a run. And she's showing why she's considered one of the best arms in the bullpen for the Phoenix. That one in the dirt, 2-1 count. And I think it's important to note, Chase, that even though Delaware has the 3-0 lead, this is still a relatively manageable position for Elon. Got to remember, they scored four runs in the bottom of the second inning yesterday. It's just that this offense has been relatively dormant this afternoon, but it could come alive at any moment. For sure, but going against Morgan Hess, she has just been fantastic today for the Blue Hens, so it's going to be tough. That's why that out at the end of the four, bottom of the fourth to Caitlin Wells hurts a little bit more because when your offense starts to get a little momentum going against Morgan Hess, you want to capitalize on that. Costaro takes first base. Looks like she was kind of hit by the pitch potentially on that left thigh. They'll go ahead and talk things over though as that was pretty close. Was a 2-1 count with, before that pitch and they're gonna go ahead and tell her to come back. We'll go ahead and take another look at the replay. That was really close right there. Well, it just scrapes that right knee kind of leg area. I think Gastaro has an argument, but it was really close. Yeah, that was like, can understand the call either way right there. But now it's a 3-1 count, so that does count as a ball, though. Still a hitter's count, though, for Gastaro. Could just end up being the same result just with one more pitch added to it. We'll see here, though. Well, then it's ball, don't lie. <laughs> Staro pops that one up. Grant able to make the play at shortstop. Well, if we're going off ball, don't lie, Chase, then that last pitch was not a hit by pitch. But this Elon defense now is settling down. We've talked about those errors, but it was really back in innings one and two and they've been able to limit Delaware right now to a .111 batting average. It's a lot of ones. <laughs> but that's a, that's a huge play for Grant, who had two of those errors, and that one was straight up. And you get in your head a little bit after making two errors early, so, and that just shows her veteran leadership that she's able to put that one away and able to get a little bit of a confidence boost. Now two outs on the board for Elon. Julia Boyette batting has fallen under that 300 mark. 0 of 2 this afternoon, batting 295 now. Does have 26 RBIs. Early 1 0 count for her. That one goes outside. Boyette had a very strong high school career, holds her school's record for batting average, RBIs, hits, home runs, triples, and doubles. Did you get everything? <laughs> had 101 RBIs, had a batting average of 468, total of 162 hits and 34 doubles. Well, and she was really notable coming out of high school. That's why she ended up at Duke, now here at Delaware, transferring after her first three years. And she's continued to have some success, almost batting 300. Looking at her career, at Duke, she started in two games for them last season, batted 200, also had three RBIs and two doubles. 2-1 two count now for Boyett. Strike two call. Taylor Cherry starting to find the strike zone pretty well. Boyette also batted 308 with four RBIs through her 13 appearances back in 2022 with the Blue Devils. That one goes high, gets past Carly Davis. No one on though. Full count coming up. And Taylor Cherry Chase, she has done a good job of coming in and really, really settling things down for this Elon defense. She's had a fantastic rebound season. Her first season, she's a junior now, but her rookie season was on that CAA All Rookie Team, two time Rookie of the Week. But then last season, 4.5 ERA, a two and one record. So not bad by her stretch, but now moving into more of a relief role, she's done a great job. Boyette is able to get a base hit. 
She'll stay at first base. A line drive hit over into right field. Mari Murray able to make the play to pot potentially prevent the extra base hit. Well, I was going to mention that her first time up to bat, strikeout looking, second time, she hit one to right field, and they were, the Elon was able to get underneath it. That time, another nice hit into right field, dropping. You got to figure that she was due up for a hit as she was batting over 300 coming into today. Morgan Hess, who has had quite the afternoon in the pitcher's circle, fouls that one off in her first pitch. Keeps hitting it to the left. Got to remember her first two at-bats were both line outs over to Allie Searing at third base. She really is loving that left side. And as you mentioned, Allie Searing, not only were two line outs, they were two balls that were drilled into Allie Searing. And Morgan Hess has showed she's got a lot of power behind that bat. Hess. Once again, a foul ball to the left side. She is batting 393 when there are two outs. Well, you'll also see Allie Searin is playing really close to that third base line. She knows that's exactly where Hess has favored all game long. As we mentioned, Hess was a phenomenal player with Presbyterian College back in 2022 and 23. Got many athletes over there. She's down early right now, 0-2. Hess puts that one on the ground, throws over to Megan Grant. Megan Grant is able to make the play. And so Elon's defense once again stands strong. They've really put things together here, but Delaware still leads 3-0 as we go into the fifth inning stretch. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt's Softball Park. Looking at, taking a look at the upcoming Delaware schedule. They finish things out here in Elon tomorrow. Then they play at Villanova on the 9th, then play in-state rival Delaware State on the 10th, and then they got the series with Monmouth from the 12th from the 14th, and then the series with Hofstra from the 19th through the 21st, followed by a doubleheader between Cop and State that was rescheduled from earlier this month. Chase. It's going to be very interesting to see how Delaware performs here late, especially since Monmouth and Hofstra, especially Hofstra, are at the top half of that CAA standings right now. That one popped up. Gabby Shaw, easy catch made by Chloe Blantz over at shortstop. But looking at this just overall Delaware schedule, I mean, they've yet to play Campbell. They've yet to play Hofstra. Both of those teams at the very top of the CAA standings. Then you still got Monmouth who's pretty good, and so Delaware is kind of entering into a hard stretch right now in terms of their CAA schedule. For sure, they're definitely about to match up with the tougher teams in the conference, and now that we're in the month of April, this is peak softball and baseball weather time. Now that March Madness is wrapping up, you've got the championships not too far away, but now it's fully on the mindset of everybody for softball and baseball. And this is really going to tell the difference between whether this is the Delaware team that has been back-to-back -back regular season champions or if they're a team that can push into the playoffs and take a postseason from the CAA. 101 count now for Wirt. Wirt is able to get it to fall. 
The first hit of the season for Mary Moss Wirt. She's gonna go ahead and head over to the third. She slides, she is safe. Mary Moss Wirt, her first hit is a triple. Take a quick look at the replay. Wirt was able to get a decent piece of it, was able to hit it over the head of Chloe Blantz. Diamedi at left field was not able to get there in time. And Mary Moss Wirt flying high right now with the Elon Phoenix, does a little dance over at third base and chase. This Elon softball crowd is loving it. You would have thought that she just hit a home run to walk it off. Mary Moss Wirt, 0 of 36 up to this point, batting zeros, having a tough season offensively, has gone some time here and there. That has got to be just a weight off of her shoulders. And to do so with a triple, no less, to push it, to kick into high gear and get all the way to third, what a way to do it. She did have an on-base percentage, important to note, of 250 coming into today, but still, that has got to feel really good for work. Got the start at catcher this afternoon, was subbed out for Carly Davis a couple of innings into this one. Still in the batting lineup, though, and she makes the absolute most of it. Greta Hessenthaler rounding out the lineup. I mean, I cannot get over this crowd lit up. It's ironic, too, because Elon only three hits this afternoon, and one of them comes from Mary Mossworth, who hadn't found a hit this season up until now. Swing and a miss for Hessenthaler. Going back to the schedule, though, Elon kind of have a little bit of an easy stretch coming up. They play Towson and Hampton, which are two teams kind of towards the bottom of the CAA standings. And so if they beat Delaware, at least in this weekend series, and take care of business, then they could definitely threaten to take over that number one spot. Mary Moss Wirt was thinking about coming home, but she doesn't. Veronica Diamini, very good arm. She threw that to home pretty much effortlessly. Well, there's a reason she's in left field. Diamini with the arm. And again, I was getting ready to call Mary Moss Wirt coming all the way home, tagging up there. But Diamidi made sure she stayed put at third. Well, Megan Grant now back to the top of the batting lineup. 0 for 1 this afternoon in her at bats. Megan Grant is able to get an RBI. Mary Moss Wirt comes home, making a 3 1 game, still in favor of Delaware. But this Elon offense is starting to get going. Megan Grant starting to come alive, not only defensively, but on offense as well. She got a couple crucial outs, has built upon where she struggled in the first couple innings, and she has put this Elon team back in it. And talk about a juice play from Mary Moss Wirt. This team is humming now, and we'll see if they can build upon it with two outs, get a rally going. Sometimes all you need is a little play, a little spark to go ahead and get things going. Wouldn't necessarily expect it from work, but she got her first hit and it came at the right time, that's for sure. Still a two run lead for the Blue Hens. That one called a strike. Mincer now batting 0 for 1 in her at bats this afternoon. Mincer batting 202 of six RBIs this season. That one fouled off. Makes it a one-two count. Mincer kind of one of those small ball type players, likes to place the bumps, uh, bunts a few kind of um, trying to advance the runner. So this is not a scenario you want her in. Although, surprisingly, she is batting 321 when there are two outs on the board. Mincer puts that one on the ground. Throw over to first is in time. Mincer was about a step behind. So Delaware able to get out of the inning, but not before giving up a run as they lead 3-1 going into the sixth inning.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hunt Softball Park. Looking at Elon's upcoming schedule, they play at Towson next weekend. Then they come back to Hunt Softball Park to play the Hampton Pirates. Then they go up to Long Island, New York to take on the Stony Brook Seawolves. And then they round things out in the regular season with senior weekend against Drexel that May 2nd through May 4th. And looking at things, Chase, Towson and Hampton towards the bottom of the CAA lineups. But then Stony Brook and Drexel, they're kind of right near those mid positions, only about a game or two behind the Elon Phoenix. And so those last two series could be pivotal in terms of who, if Elon gets to the CAA tournament. Well, we talked about it before. There's right now there's just this cluster in the middle, so every win's going to matter because at the end of the day, it's probably going to come down to those tiebreakers. But for Elon, your mind is fully on conference play. They don't have a non-conference opponent the rest of the way. And picking up another win against Delaware, one already is huge given where they stand right now in the standings. But picking up another would be big, and they've gotten a little bit of momentum here in the back half of this one. I think it's interesting you point that out, that Elon, no non-conference games for the rest of the way because that's not the case for most other teams. I mean, looking towards Tuesday, April 9th and Wednesday, April 10th, you have a lot of non-conference games going on for basically every CAA team, but Elon, that one hits the wall. Very powerful hit by Matty Fife. Matty Fife is gonna go over to second after that throw gets away from the Phoenix. And so she'll go ahead and turn it into a double, but that's error number five against the Elon Phoenix. Well, as powerful as that hit was, I'm surprised she didn't get a double straight up, but right when you feel like you're getting a little bit of momentum to commit another error like that, that's a tough blow for Elon. Went over Megan Grant's head, allowed her to go over to second. Pretty good job by that Elon infield to back up the bad throw. And it looks like the Delaware Blue Hens are gonna go ahead and make a substitution. And Naya Troy will go ahead and now be a pinch runner. She'll come in and stand at second base. Well, it's also an unnecessary error because you're throwing from about center right field into the infield. And Fife was already to first. She was standing up. She wasn't thinking about taking second. So you could have took your time to throw it in but now you've got a runner on second. Kristen Luzen is actually now pinch hitting for the Delaware Blue Hens, number 22. The sophomore out of Stony Point, New York, went to North Rockland High School. Perhaps that one foul goes into the Delaware Blue Hen, or Blue Pin, or Bull Pin. It's a tough one. <laughs> Luzen's batting 471 this season. It's only had 17 at-bats, but through those 17 at-bats has eight hits and four RBIs and a home run. Oh, one count now, runner at second. Luzin smokes that one in the center field, but it falls short. Mints are able to make the catch. It does advance the runner over to third though. Good strategy right now by the Blue Hens. Go ahead, put a power hitter in, put a pinch runner in at second. Allows her to advance over to third base. Really nice hit by Luzon. Just to come in and nail it all the way into deep center field. You advance the runner up and now you've got Garber who wasn't successful her last go around but got to first on error and then had a double earlier. So definitely someone you won in this position to try to bring a runner home. She's gotten on first, or she's gotten on base multiple times this afternoon. Strike one called. Garber, a preseason all CAA player. Six RBIs, two triples, and five doubles coming into this one. Garber also second on the team in stolen bases. She's seven of eight in that category. 0 1 count, runner at third, two outs. That one goes high. Taylor Cherry, there have been multiple times this inning where Delaware has definitely gotten some very good looking hits. Obviously had that double earlier on that hit that outfield wall only a couple of feet from going over. 
then of course that last at bat, even though it was caught by Minster, she kind of had to back up a decent amount to get to it. Well, they've gotten some really good power behind the bat, and a lot of them have fallen foul or have gotten popped straight up, but they're one good hit away from breaking this game wide open. Barber, a second team all CAA player last season, second on the team then in batting average at 358. One, two count for Garber. That one goes low, makes it a two, two count. Garber also a three year starter in field hockey where she was a two time academic all league player. So Garber, a very good field hockey career back in high school. So in other words, an academic weapon. Yes, two, two count for Garber coming up. Got a runner at third, prime scoring position here for the Blue Hens. Sacrifice fly won't do you any good though. Now it's a full count. Gar Garber holds her school's record in both triples and stolen bases back in high school. Three time all league player. Also a first team all state player. She now has the full count, hits that one over to Megan Grant. Megan Grant is able to make the play. It went off her glove, but then went into her other hand. Able to get it barehanded, throw it over to first base. Nice recovery by Megan Grant. Elon still keeps Delaware limited to three runs. Elon trails by two, going into the bottom of the sixth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Elon still staying in this one. They're down 3-1, trying to make the comeback to ultimately take the series against the best team right now in the CAA. Delaware got to a fast start thanks to some Elon errors, but other than those three runs in the first two innings, things have been quiet for this Delaware team, at least on offense. But on the other side, Morgan Hess has put together quite a game right now in the pitcher circle. Morgan Hess has just been I keep using the word dealing, but there's no better way to put it. 76 pitches, and of those 76, she has three strikeouts, has only walked one batter, and she's been up and down this Elon lineup and has not really given up much. Mari Murray easily thrown out at first. That definitely hurts the Elon Phoenix as Murray was leading the team in batting average. If you want to get things going, you were going to get it started with her, most likely. That one called a strike. Makes a 0-1 count. Of course, important to note right now that Delaware joining Conference USA for the 2025-26 school year. That one goes fair. Carly Davis will go ahead and stay at first hit that third base, a hit for Carly Davis, and ironically, Elon now has more hits than Delaware. They have five hits to the Blue Hens four. Carly Davis able to really just streak it down the third base line and popped over the third base bag. Made it tough to collect for Delaware, and it's enough to get her all the way to first. And with one out on the board, Elon, a little bit of momentum, but they really need to Start getting the bats humming, and that's a good way to do it. That one's going to be another base hit for the Elon Phoenix. Allie Searing with the single. 
Hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen. You now got runners at first and second. Zally Searing was able to hit that through the gap. And Elon now threatening here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Not only good hitting, but smart hitting. Ali Searing sent that one straight up the middle. No one there. And now you got Caitlin Wells coming up, who hasn't been the best with runners in scoring position or runners on. But this was a great time to get it going. She's batting 175 when runners are in scoring position, 242 when runners are on in general. Batting 266 overall, though. 0 of 2 this afternoon. So you got to assume that she is due up for a hit here soon. Mention how ha she had such a great weekend down in Charleston, the Palmetto State. So that one is a ball. Not her best day so far. Like you mentioned, 0 for 2, struck out, and then grounded into a double play. And this is not where you want to do replicate that performance. I want to put this one through the gap. Delaware does have a prime opportunity to get a double play right here if it's kept in the infield. Morgan Hess gets a strike. Going back to that point we talked about, Delaware joining Conference USA makes them an FBS football school. They've been a longtime member of the CAA at this point, and so if you're the Elon Phoenix, you're hoping to get some wins over them not only in softball, but in other sports as well before Delaware ultimately makes the move. As a little bit of a parting gift, but this is a conference now when the CAA that's continued to grow. Delaware will take the trip to Conference USA, add ice hockey there. So a move for them that allows them to play that higher competition that they feel like they're ready for. But before they go, they want to finish up business in terms of the softball. Swing and a miss there. This is a Delaware team that has been consistently good in CAA sports. Obviously, consistently making the FCS playoffs in football. Have always been good in softball. It's also been pretty consistently good in men's and women's basketball. So it's definitely going to be an interesting jump for them to make to go from the CAA to Conference USA. And this past season with volleyball, they were also spectacular. It's very rare that in any of their sports, you find the Blue Hens towards the bottom of the standings. They're either in the middle of the pack or right at the top. That one popped up into the shallow infield. Catch is made by Shivert. Obviously, the runners don't advance, and so two outs. Runners at second and first. Elon, only four more outs to operate here, Chase. Elon definitely, it's pretty obvious they need to get things going offensively, which they have been able to. You got two runners on the bags, but then in these two out situations, they have just not been able to capitalize. They've left multiple runners on the bases. That one definitely going foul. It would have been out of here if it stayed fair. They're keeping us on our toes. We've mentioned it time and time again, that left side of the foul pole has been hot. Somebody put a magnet over there. <laughs> I mean, I was leaning back in my seat a little bit because I thought that was potentially going to be caught by Diomedi if it stayed fair, but it just straight up went over the wall. Just got to hit it a little bit later here for Gabby Shaw. Shaw able to hit it through the gap. They're going to go ahead and wave her home. She is safe. Is she thrown out at third? She is. So that goes ahead and makes it a 3-2 ball game. That does go ahead and end the inning. But Elon one run closer to ultimately tying the Blue Hens. Nice hit right there. And it's going to go ahead and put us into the seventh inning.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Looking back at that last half inning, Gabby Shaw had a nice base hit and a throw over at third base was in time though. Caught Ali Searing trying to go ahead, get over there, but it does make it a 3-2 ball game. So it did bring the runner home. Seven hits on the board right now for the Elon Phoenix. Only four for the Delaware Blue Hens, but because of those five errors against the Phoenix, Delaware still finds themselves up by one run. Well, it was a great hit by Shaw. I didn't love the decision by Searing to take off. You could see in the replay that she kind of paused at second base and then took off for third and then was thrown out. So while you do get the runner in, it does count for the Elon run. You could have had more, and it feels like maybe you got a little bit greedy. That one hit foul. Bounces off the warning track on the left side. 0-2 count early for Shivert. Shivert was over 300, or right at 300, excuse me, coming into today. He was batting one of two this afternoon. Had a walk, a single, and a fly out. 0-2 count early for her, though. Shivert pops it up and Hits the netting right over the Elon dugout. And this is such a huge difference right now, Chase. Elon batting 318 as a team this, this afternoon. Delaware batting 167. Again, it just goes back to that point of errors. Those five errors have just put Elon in this hole. They are starting to climb out of it a little bit, but they aren't out of it yet. Ali Searing makes a great play at third base. What a catch made by Ali Searing. For every error this afternoon, Chase, there's been another time where you say, what a great fielding play. I mean, Ali Searing, she has gotten a couple balls just drilled at her. That one. There's a lot of players that don't make that play, don't have the speed to get down there and get underneath the ball, but Ali Searing, just a special player and able to make a special play. Takes a lot of guts to be able to get the start in the hot corner. Ali Searing certainly has what it takes though. Now Sydney Schaefer batting. She's now below 400 on the season. Entered today above that mark. She's 0 for 2 in her at-bats this afternoon. Was walked back in the first inning, though. Schaefer still above that 500 mark, though, in terms of her on-base percentage at 5.04. Also has 11 doubles on the year with 25 RBIs. It's also been walked 19 times. She gets on base. <laughs> 2-0 count early for her. Schaefer blasts that one deep, and that one is gone. Sydney Schaefer with a solo shot gives the Blue Hens a little bit more cushioning as they now lead 4-2. That one was blasted into left center. Sydney Schaefer. One of the CA leaders in home runs and continued to add to her total. And with that, the first earned run against Taylor Cherry this afternoon. Still has her ERA though at 3.64, but Schaefer absolutely blasted it over into the trees out in left field. Well, and up to this point, Cherry has really been good in relief, but Again, you're going against one of the best home run hitters in the conference, arguably in the nation, and Schaefer. Only a solo homer, so you minimize the damage by not having anybody on base. But like you said, nice cushion for the Blue Hens. Two-point lead. It makes Elon's hopes of a walk-off a little tougher heading into the bottom of the seven. That certainly hurts the Phoenix as well because you got to figure that if it was a 3-2 ball game, then any at-bat could be the tying run ultimately. Castaro thought she was hit at first. Home plate umpire disagrees though. So it'll make it a 1-1 count. I believe this is the second time that Castaro thought she got hit by a pitch or 
It was a different blue hand. Same time, and I do think she did get hit on the thigh. Yeah, she started running over to first. Home plate umpire disagreed. And I do believe it was Castaro that first time around that it barely scraped off her thigh. Any argument could be made either way, but that time you can clearly see the ball took a different trajectory and bounced off her leg. Castaro was hit by a pitch earlier on in this game back in the first inning. That also resulted in a one-run RBI for her. So she's just been getting it from the Elon pitchers. So 1-1 one, one count coming up for Castaro, batting 318. That one goes outside, makes it 2-1. For the Elon Phoenix, you got to prevent Delaware from getting some momentum here so that it doesn't make it too tall of an order going into the bottom of that seventh inning. And there's a reason Castaro's at this, at this fourth spot in the lineup. She also has some power. Strike two called. Castaro does have seven home runs on the year and five doubles. Those home runs and RBI is good enough to be first in the CAA in both categories. 2-2 two -two count now. Staro able to hit it through the gap. Wells picks it up in left field. That's going to be a single for Castaro. Hit number six for the Delaware Blue Hens. Elon still one more hit than the Blue Hens, but man, have they had some power. Even the ones that have gone through the gap, just enough speed behind it to get their runners on base and make it tough for these Elon outfielders and infielders to make a play on the ball. It's a big reason why there's five errors on the board. And now it's gonna go ahead, bring in a pinch runner. Jenna Giatano is gonna go ahead, come in. She's a freshman outfielder from Donovan Catholic High School in Jackson, New Jersey. One out on the board right now, Julia Boyette. He's getting the star in the hot corner this afternoon for the Delaware Blue Hens. She's up to bat now, batting 302. Well, yet had that single in her last at bat as one of three overall this afternoon. Well, yet also 26 RBIs this season. Batting 288 when there are runners on base. Taylor Cherry now discussing things with Carly Davis. The Elon infield also discussing things amongst themselves right now. For Elon, you gotta go ahead, buckle down here on defense. Can't allow Delaware to go ahead and widen the lead going into that bottom of the seventh inning. Well, the nice thing for Elon is that Delaware, their next two hitters do up. Hess and Blantz are both 0 for 3, but this is a Delaware lineup where everyone is either batting over 300 or is very close. Important to note, though, that Hess and Blanche are both batting over 300 on the season. So just looking at the stats right there, you got to think that, hey, you know, they may be due up for a hit here shortly. Two will count now for Boyette. Runner at first, one out. Boy, it pops that one up over to Greta Hessenthaler. Hessenthaler able to make the catch. Even if she had dropped that, wouldn't have really mattered anyways as she would have just thrown over to second and get the out there. But regardless, two outs. Delaware still with that two-run lead. Morgan Hess, who has played a great game in the pitching circle this afternoon for Delaware, has kind of Kind of, fall, kind of fallen a little bit here in the last few innings. Allowed a few runs, but still other than that, he's put on a very, very good performance here today. Hess keeps hitting into that left side, Chase, and still has a lot of power underneath it. Well, Hess is someone that has 12 doubles on the year, three home runs, so definitely some power. And we talk about her two-way ability. She's done what she's needed to do in the pitching circle, still going to have to cap it off. 
but hasn't had the best day hitting 0 for 3. And it's really because of Ali Searing's play at third base. Hess hits that one in the left field. Out of reach for Caitlin Wells. It hit the wall. It's a couple of feet just to the left of that foul line. 0 of 2. The Bears repeating, Chase, that she is getting contact, that she is hitting them pretty deep. Just can't get them to fall fair. Basically, if you're the left fielder, the shortstop, third baseman, you need to be locked in right now because Morgan Hess has just been nailing them over there. A lot of them have gone foul, and she's hit some line outs, but no mistake, she has gotten some power. Fouled off again. This time it goes way far to the left, out into the parking lot, makes it 0-2 still. Allie Searing certainly has been locked in over at third base when Hess steps into the batter's box. Now see Caitlin Wells playing farther to the left than usual with this at bat. Whole outfield has shifted to a left by a few steps. Go ahead and give them that little bit of a head start. Once again, fouls it off. And Shea, she is really battling right now. I'm not sure where you can see it, but there's it's got to be very high, the amount of pitches that Hess has seen throughout this game. Again, only 0 for 3, or just 0 for 3, but Hess has been battling against these pitchers. Hess, 17 RBIs on the season and 12 doubles. 0-2 count. Once again, and Chase, it felt like she even swinged that strongly at that one, yet it still went over into the parking lot. Anybody that's parked over there, there hasn't been many that have gotten, found its way into the parking lot. But you know, it's always, it's always a risk parking on that far side. Six foul balls right now for Morgan Hess in this at bat. It's a long at bat. That one goes low. The first ball, throw over to first, she is safe. Ooh, I thought that throw was in time there for a second really close. Carly Davis said, can't believe it. We'll take a quick look at the replay. Can't quite see it there exactly. Ali Searing kind of blocking the view right there of the camera. If I had to guess, just kind of timing it in my head, I actually do think she made it back in time. And still can't quite tell that one. Foul ball number seven now for Hess in this at bat. And the pitch before that was the first ball. It, it was an 0-2 count up to that point. Hess batting 269 when there are runners on base, batting 379 when there are two outs. Also has an on-base percentage of 354 this season. One, two count now for Hess. Hess hits that one straight back into the netting. She is fighting and clawing her way in this at bat. Bryson, for you, how many different ways can you describe a foul <laughs> ball? Because you're getting your practice. I, I, I mean, I might as well be. I mean, it's, <laughs> she's certainly kind of wearing the dictionary thin a little bit right now. But it's a one, two count. Hess wants a hit. 0-3 this afternoon. That one goes high, makes it a 2-2 count. Hess is not giving up. She's either getting a hit or she's going to go down either swinging or walking over to first base. This is easily the longest at-bat, at least over these last two contests. Personally, this might be the longest at-bat I've seen in person. Still a 2-2 count. Runner is at first right now for the Elon, or excuse me, for the Delaware Blue Hens. Puts that one over to Megan Grant. Grant throws over to first. Easy out made by Elon for what was otherwise a very entertaining at bat. But Delaware is going to go ahead and lead 4 2 going into the bottom of the seventh inning. Thanks to a solo shot, Elon needs to score at least two runs in the next three outs.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we go into the bottom of the seventh inning, Mary Mosswert with her first hit of the season. It was a triple placed into no man's land, and Mary Mosswert very, very hyped up after that triple. It ultimately got Elon on the board a few innings ago, and she is now up to bat to lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. As we said, Elon needs at least two runs here in these next three outs. Strike one called against Wirt. Wirt, an on-base percentage of 260. For perspective, at the point when Wirt got her triple, Elon was down in a 3-0 hole. Her hit was the kind of the juice play that Elon's been able to surge upon and make this a close game, only two runs. But they really need her to come alive once again and continue to build upon that hit. 0-2 count, that last off-speed pitch caught Wirt looking. That one goes outside. And for Elon, if you can stay alive, you're almost to the top of the order where you got more of your power hitters. And you put yourself in a good situation to try to walk this one off. You will get at least to Megan Grant. You really kind of want to go back to Mari Murray and Carly Davis if you're able to. But to do that, you got to get through at least four batters. And so you need to get someone on base, two out of those four batters, including Mary Moss Wirt. Wirt, 2-2 two, two count now. Elon has a team batting 318 coming into this half inning today. Wirt puts that one on the ground and not able to beat it out. Trying to get her second hit of the season, was not able to do so. Out number one on the board. Greta Hessenthaler now up to bat. She's batting 259 this season, is 0 of 2 this afternoon, Chase. Has an on base percentage of 347. I know this is a serious situation, but the walkout song of the Lil Einstein's <laughs> Trap Remix, that is a choice, and I respect it. <laughs> that one is inside, makes it 1 0. Certainly brings a kind of unique curveball to this situation here in the bottom of the seventh. Hessenthaler does have 13 RBIs on the season. A lot of strikeouts and a lot of walks. 14 strikeouts and 11 walks. Two zero count early for Hessenthaler. And like we said, just being able to get a batter or two on base is so huge right now because then you get to that part of the batting lineup that you want in this situation if you're the Phoenix. That one goes low, making a 3-0 count. And Greta Hessenthaler has been a great contact hitter for the Phoenix. 21 hits, five doubles. She hasn't had a triple or a home run, but that on-base percentage, 347, and batting 259. You assume that she won't swing at this pitch unless if it's put on a silver platter. Strike is called, hit the outside part of that strike zone. That one again, really close. Hess has done a great job. It hasn't always worked out in their favor, but playing the outside of the strike zone, there hasn't been a lot of her pitches that have gone right down the middle. Hessenthaler still has the hitter's count. Hessenthaler fouls that one off. It now goes to a full count. Just looking back to this series so far, Chase, Elon did such a great job last night, and despite the mistakes, they've still been able to keep the best team in the conference on their toes, especially here late this afternoon. Well, it gives you a lot of just pride and hope heading into the rest of the conference schedule that you were able, they weren't undefeated, but you're able to knock down Delaware by just a few pegs. They're still at the top of the standings. But again, we've mentioned it before, the cluster in the middle, that win might end up playing a big difference when it comes down to seeding and whether or not Elon can make it into the tournament. That one tipped by Hesselfaller, but you look back, it's when they got swept by UNCW a few weeks ago, then they lost two heartbreakers to Campbell before taking game three of that series. They have really turned things around here recently. That one goes high, Hesselfaller takes first base. 
That is the first walk in quite a while. Actually, it's the first walk since the second inning. Like we mentioned, Hess has been fantastic all throughout this game. But Elon able to stay patient, specifically Hessenthaler. And now she puts her team in a great situation. One out on the board, a runner on first, and you're at the top of the order. Got to be careful right here. Can't put it to the shortstop or the second baseman. Don't want a double play to end it. That one ultimately caught Grant thrown out at first. What a good play by Julia Boyette, able to catch it off of the bounce. Out number two on the board. Well, Ali Searing has had some good plays at third base, but Julia Boyette able to get in front of it, get back up and throw it all the way over to first. And looking back, that might be one of the most important plays in this entire game. True Mincer is up to bat right now, but the Elon coaching staff discussing things over. Just looking at this Elon roster, this may be a scenario, Chase, where you want to go ahead and put in Reagan Hartley or Ella Roberson to pinch hit. Looks like they will go ahead and do that. Question is who? Will they go with number four Hartley, number 27 Roberson? Both have shown that they have been pretty good pinch hitters here lately. But it's ultimately up to head coach Kathy Bocock to decide who they go with. It just hasn't been a great day for Menser, who has been a phenomenal player for the Phoenix throughout her career, but a strikeout looking and then two ground outs just not been her day, but it does look like we're actually gonna get pinch, pinch runner and a pinch hitter. So Ella Roberson's gonna be the pinch hitter and Peyton Fitzpatrick now gonna be the pinch runner. Fitzpatrick is one of one in her stolen bases coming into today. Roberson batting 250 has an on-base percentage of 368. So here you go for Ella Roberson. Your number has been called. You're down two runs. You're the game tying run as you enter into the batter's box. And you have no more outs to give. A lot on her shoulders as a freshman. 250 on the year. Ella Roberson, it's your time. Strike one called. Roberson has started in nine games this season, has appeared in 27 before today. Has five RBIs on the year, also does have one home run and three doubles. Strike two called there. It's one of those off-speed pitches where you second guess it as a hitter but you're kind of kicking yourself afterwards because that could have been smoked by Roberson if she took the opportunity. I mean, give it up for Morgan Hess. She's done phenomenal. That one just outside. You could hear the Delaware Blue Hen dugout cheering. They thought that was game. We bring it up time and time again, Morgan Hess. Her game is playing the outside of the strike zone and a lot of those come down to the ump's discretion. Now over 100 pitches this afternoon for Hess. That one goes high. Came back down pretty fast there for a second, but not in time. 2-2 Two -two count coming up. Well, you could see it in Hess's face right after she let it go. She tapped her chest, said, my bad, but still in a good situation with two outs. Still only one strike away for Delaware from tying this series. 2-2 Two -two count. That one goes low. Roberson thought about swinging at it for a second. Here we go, Chase, full count. Well, this is the moment for either of these players. Full count, two outs. What is L. Roberson dialing up? Roberson crushes that one to right field, but it's going to fall short. Catch is made by Ellie Mulligan, and that is your game, ladies and gentlemen. Delaware gets the victory 4-2 over Elon. Elon making things interesting there, but it was too little too late as those five errors committed early.